So remember, the protozoans are a group of algae that are animal-like. Now they're not animals. All protozoans are unicellular, and in order to be considered an animal, you have to be multicellular. Now we're only going to look at a subset of some of the protozoans. The ones that I chose to talk about are ones that are either something you've heard of or maybe cause a disease that you heard of, or are some that are commonly found in ecosystems in our area. So let's get started with group apicomplexans. So group apicomplexans are parasites, all of them are. And the name apicomplexans, you're probably like, I never heard of that before. So what they have is something called an apical complex. And it's a series of organelles that are designed to drill into cells. So if I look at this um, diagram of the cell in the top right, as well as in the bottom left, in the top right, this is showing the entire apicomplexin. And on one side of the cell, you see it's a little bit more ovular in shape. This side on the right hand side is the apical complex. Apical is referring to apex, which means the end, and the complex is just the series of organelles. If we look closer at that apical complex and look at the organelles, it's really kind of fascinating. It, it kind of looks like a drill. And that's what apicomplexins do. They will literally go to cells that they, of their host that they're parasitizing and literally drill through the plasma membrane in order to get inside of that cell. Now, the reason I bring this up, you're like, I, I, I don't want to find this. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to like see these things. So a common, or I want to say common, but an example of an AP complexin is plasmodium. So plasmodium, you notice it's italicized. This is referring to the genus name. There's actually quite a few species, but all of them doing similar things. Plasmodium is actually what causes malaria. So what happens is that mosquitoes are carrying that plasmodium parasite um, in its food, in the blood that it's taken. And then when that mosquito lands on another human, when it drinks from that human, there is some blood mixing. And so it's gonna pass on that plasmodium parasite to you. And that plasmodium parasite attacks uh, your red blood cells. So it'll literally drill through your red blood cells to get inside of them and take advantage of all the I mean, oxygen and iron that's in them, use it for reproduction and to continue with its infection. Now, I'm gonna describe a video that you guys are gonna watch. So this video is by a company called HHMI. It's a couple minutes long, essentially talking to you about the malaria parasite. There's no particular notes that you need to record. It's just giving you a better visual and a better understanding of what malaria is and how it passes. There's also one point where it's showing you what the apicomplexin plasmodium looks like, and you can see that the tip, that apical complex, is the side that is entering that red blood cell first. So that's probably the most crucial thing. I just want you to actually see that. But malaria is still something that is affecting many individuals around the world. So it's kind of interesting to learn more about it. So go ahead and pause this video. There's a link coming up above me that's going to take you to watch that video about malaria. Watch it and then come back. So hopefully you learned um, a bit more about malaria. And again, this is still a prevalent um, disease and condition that affects tons of people around the world. So kind of interesting to learn that it's actually a protist causing it. When people think of diseases, we typically think of bacteria and viruses, but it's kind of interesting to learn about these protists, these eukaryotic cells that are causing it. The next group of organisms we'll talk about are group ciliates. The reason we talk about these guys is these are very common uh, in freshwater ecosystems, very easy to find, and probably the most, uh, may, this actually might be the most common one, or at least most well-known one, is paramecium. Again, it's italicized. This is referring to a genus name and includes a lot of different species, but they all share very common characteristics. So think about the word ciliates. Inside of that word is cilia. Cilia are small hair-like extensions that come out of a cell that help that cell to move, or at least in this case, help it to move. There's other types of cells that might have cilia, but they may use them for a slightly different function. 
So taking a look on the left, this is just a diagram of a ciliate, and you see all of these hair-like extensions all around it. Now, because we're looking at a 2D view, you don't see it, but these are co entirely covering it. So that entire cell is covered in cilia. The right hand is a picture of it in a microscope. Again, it looks like it's a ring of cilia, but in actuality, it's 100% covering that cilia. And they use these cilia in tandem and in, with motion, um, or sorry, with a coordinated motion for movement. Now these are protozoans, which remember that means they have to consume things. And how they consume things is kind of, I don't know, I think it's cool. I think everything is cool, so that's probably not very helpful. Um, but they have something called an oral groove. Now when other unicellular things eat, a lot of the times what they do is they just kind of get up, get up and close to the things they want to eat and then just, just like absorb them. Uh, but with the ciliates, it's almost like they have a mouth, this oral groove. So I'll show you here on the left hand side on this diagram. So you can see it's this groove, something that kind of indents into the cell. And this is open, like if this was larger, you could put your finger in it, like it's kind of open to the environment. And what ciliates do is they use their cilia not only to move their selves, but to also kind of create a current to move food into the oral groove. So the cilia around the oral groove are going to push in. They're going to create a current of water to go into that oral groove. They might trap other protists. They might trap some algae. They might trap some bacteria. They might um, trap just other stuff, smaller stuff, into their oral groove. And they create these little circles that you see. This is what happens when cells engulf things, is these little circles are the food stuff that they caught just trapped in plasma membrane of that paramecium. And that paramecium will send out enzymes um, and other macromolecules to start digesting and taking out the important things they need in that food vesicles. Now here on the right hand, the actual microscope image, the oral groove is a little bit harder to see, but you can see kind of on this one, the oral groove is along here, and on this paramecium, the oral groove is along here. So again, they're using their cilia not only to move, but also to move food into themselves. The video I'm going to have you guys watch is only about 30 or so seconds long, and it's looking at a very beautiful microscope image of a paramecium that is feeding, and you may want to watch it a couple times. You're going to see the cilia rapidly beating around this paramecium, and you're going to actually see it pushing food. You won't see the food particles, but you'll see that current that's going through the oral groove and creating one of these food vesicles. So it shows you the formation of one of those food vesicles, and then it shows it kind of popping off. Um, but it's kind of cool to watch um, to see what's happening at this molecular level, right? This is a single cell, and this is how they're consuming food, which is pretty cool. So go ahead and pause here, click on the link that's popping up above me, and go watch this a uh, more intimate process of a paramecium feeding um, using its oral groove. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video, or at least just appreciated the detail that that video provides, uh, showing you how these structures work together. The next group of protozoans we'll talk about are the amoebas. And this is actually the last group of protozoans that we're gonna discuss in this class. These guys are found in tons of freshwater environments and there are large enough protists that for the most part, you actually can see them with your naked eye. You're not gonna see the cool movements that they do, but they do look like a little small white blob in water. So you wouldn't be like, ah, oh, that must be an amoeba but you could isolate that white blob under a microscope and see it. So amoebas I think are super cool, and I know I've been saying that about everything, but amoebas have these structures called pseudopodia. Pseudo means false, and pod is referring to feet. So this literally translates to false feet. And this is how an amoeba moves. So what it does is this amoeba, which is this oblong weird shape you see in this microscope slide, it can move and has flexibility of its cytoplasm. So what the amoeba will do is literally stretch out 
parts of its cytoplasm into what kind of look like feet. And that's what you're seeing, these two extensions here. And what this amoeba is doing is extending out these pseudopodia to literally surround a food item. And in this image, you can kind of see there's something there. This could be another protist. This could be a bacterium. And so this pseudopodia go around and kind of uh, completely surround this bacterium. And eventually what will happen is the pseudopodia will retract and bring it closer and closer to the rest of that amoeba. And then similar to what we saw with paramecium, it'll send out enzymes in order to break down on whatever food item it caught. This is also how amoeba move in general, is it's not cilia, it's not flagella, it's just they're literally stretching out pieces of cytoplasm. I almost think of it as like if humans are doing like an army crawl, how you kind of slowly, like your arm goes forward, your other arm goes forward, your hip goes forward, your other hip goes forward, you're kind of slowly inching along and sometimes you can reach out your arm. It's kind of like how an amoeba moves. They can also use that kind of movement for hunting as well. Now that process, so the pseudopodia is the name of the structure of, of these elongated sections, so to speak, of cytoplasm. And that form of eating, that form of consuming, so surrounding this food item and bringing it back in, is called phagocytosis. Phago refers to essentially it refers to eating, and cytosis means the kind of breaking um, of cells. So they're, they're kind of, this is as close as eating as you're going to get when it comes to a unicellular organism. So again, the, the process of phagocytosis is literally the engulfing of a food item, and then subsequently breaking down that food item. So as I mentioned before, amoebozoans, they don't really have like a negative impact on humans. Like they are part of the food chain and things like that. Um, but again, you can find these pretty much in every body of water. You can see them without a microscope, but you're not going to see the cool uh, pseudopodia and the way they move without one. So the video that I have for you guys is just taking a look at some amoebas moving around. Uh, so you can actually see this happening um, over a video stream versus this still image. So go ahead and pause here and then come on back afterwards. So pause, click on the link coming above me, and I'll see you soon. So as I alluded to before, the amoebozoans were going to be the last protozoans we talk about. Those ciliates, the amoebozoans, the apicomplexans, and as well as the dinoflagellates from the previous video are all considered protozoans. They are first animals. They're all heterotrophic. They have to engulf different food items. Now, the way they do that is crazy different. Um, we've got flagella, we got ciliates, we've got, hey, let's just move your cytoplasm. We've got drills. Lots of different techniques that these protozoans use in order to get the nutrition that they need from their, uh, the, to get the nutrition that they need to obtain energy. Our next video is going to take a look at the other informal grouping of protists. We're going to take a look at the algae.